This morning, new video of what appears to be Kobe Bryant's helicopter taken just 30 minutes before it crashed by a homeowner living under its verified flight path. Now, as investigators search for clues in the wreckage off the steep hillside, they're also looking at the weather as a factor, the NTSB appealing to the public for help. We're looking for photos of the weather in the area of the crash. The pilot, identified as Ara Zabayan, was an experienced aviator and flight instructor who colleagues say put safety first. But Sunday morning, thick fog and low clouds had grounded LAPD and sheriff's choppers. So why did Zabayan choose to fly? My concern is just the decision-making process. And uh, if we weren't flying in that weather, why is anybody else flying? Eyewitness Scott Dalen says just moments before the crash, he heard the chopper hovering above. About 20 seconds later, just heard a thump heard plexiglass breaking up. To have had this happen right here in front of you, what was that like? I just wish it didn't have to happen. Kobe Bryant regularly leased the luxury chopper a Sikorsky. It took off from Orange County Airport at 9.08 a.m. headed to Bryant's training academy in Thousand Oaks. Air traffic control told the pilot to follow highways to the north, a normal procedure. But with the clouds and fog, Zabayan requested special visual flight rules for low ceilings. Helicopter 2 Echo Extra with you for the special via fire transition. We are currently at 1400. Minutes later, over Calabasas, the chopper climbed, then descended quickly before dropping off radar with no mayday. 2 Echo Extra, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. 2 Echo Extra, is okay. The Sikorsky has one of the best safety records of any helicopter. Okay. Chopper pilot Kurt Dietz, who had also flown for Kobe Bryant, says he had never felt pressured by the basketball star to fly in any unsafe conditions. Did he ever insist on trying to get through weather or did no, he ever insist no, on nothing no, like that? No, The actual pilot flying is a final authority. So it's up to him? Yeah. Tom, there's so many questions here, but it was so striking that the NTSB investigators said they wanted the public's help. They want pictures of the weather in the area. Is that unusual? The NTSB really in recent years has been coming out and asking for the public's help because everybody has a cell phone these days, right? So people have photographs, they have video, like you saw in that piece of the chopper just a few minutes earlier. They want to collect all of that data of the chopper flying, but also of the weather. And by the way, the Sheriff's Department has had a problem with just curious onlookers trying to climb up that hill to get to the wreckage scene. So the Sheriff's Department now has deployed officers on horseback and ATVs. They've got a perimeter around the entire hill, foothill, mountain, however you want to describe it, to keep people away. So, Tom, as I understand it, no black box, no cockpit voice recorder, other than these, these pictures and the video that they're looking for from folks who might have been in the area. How else are officials planning on, on getting data from the flight? Yeah, and by the way, that was a surprise announcement when they said yesterday, in fact, there was no cockpit voice recorder. We've been led to believe that there probably was. So they will now try to get as much data as they can off of the avionics inside the helicopter. This is an advanced helicopter. There should be good data off of that. But in addition, the iPad that the pilot was using to file his flight plan, that should also hopefully glean some data. And anything at all that they can get from air traffic control, from the radar tapes, all of that will be part of this investigation. But Tom, I mean, you imagine this high-speed crash into the side of the mountain, do they think they're going to be able to retrieve that data? Will it be in, in a form that they can get the information? Well, that certainly is the, the hope. I mean, as you know, right now, these microprocessors are pretty small. They usually can withstand a crash, but there was also a significant fire. So absolutely, all of that is going to be of concern.